With internet celebrities like Jake Paul and KSI reeling in younger viewers, and legends like Tyson and Jones bringing back some of those old heads, there hasn't been this many eyes focused on the sport since its heyday during the mid-70s. And, and then he nails it right oh! in the middle of the you. you know, it's beautiful boxing. I love boxing. Celebs and legends aside, the sport overall is in a talent-rich era, with prospects, contenders, and champions all striving to become this generation's superstar. Which leads us to today's video. Our personal pick for the top 10 pound for pound fighters in the world. It's been a while since we've made one of these, but rest assured, there hasn't been a significant punch landed in the last few years that will not be taken into account today. Kovalev's not even committed to the chair. There it is. Kovalev's hurt. Kovalev's down. Kovalev's out. It's over. Admittedly, our list is in contrast to many other prominent sports writers this year. However, clarification will be given for each placement as the video progresses. Without any further ado, let's jump straight to number 10. <laughs> pound for pound, one of the hardest punchers in world boxing, Gervonta Tank Davis isn't a name quite yet associated with the sport's current upper echelon, but that's not due to a lack of effort or risks taken by the 26-year-old Baltimore Bruiser. This young man right here, natural born superstar. But the ultimate goal is to get him to surpass me. Javante made it 5 out of 5 for world title defenses, ending in a knockout after ironing out the top contender, Leo Santa Cruz, at the tail end of October. The sturdiest test of his career so far, and he came through with flying colors, making Cruz miss for multiple rounds before landing an uppercut raised from hell in the fifth. With the Gamboa fight from last year aside, Gervonta makes the list more for his display of dominance over top contenders since becoming a champion in 2017. He is a fighter who not only carries severe punching power in both hands, but has ring credit and fighting intelligence to create problems for his opponents and leave him guessing when and where the next power punch is coming from. With no disrespect meant for Santa Cruz because he is a top fighter, you still have to put an asterisk next to Gervonta's performance card due to the slightly lacking resume. Still, as you can see, so far it's a well-balanced card with his power attribute being the standout stat. I think it's fair to say, as bright of a prospect as Errol Spence Jr. looked in 2014, the boxing world started taking more notice of the young Texan once Floyd Mayweather openly described the trouble he gave him in sparring leading up to Money May's Andre Berto fight. I told you the guy was pushing me. He was giving me that good work. I said, no, this is what I need. You know, at first I came in, he kind of caught me off guard. I said, okay, I see, I see. So he made me, um, in training camp, he made me tighten my game up. Rare praise from the self-proclaimed greatest of all time. Yet, ever since, Errol has gone from strength to strength, dispatching the world's top welterweights in championship fights while remaining undefeated. It's very game right now, but he's hurt. Oh, and he goes out! He is out! Keep them up, me. Keep them up, me. I got him out of easy. Chris Azure got him out of easy. Revered today for his limitless stamina and energy-sapping body shots, Spence likes to take his time to dispatch his prey, with a good example being his victory over Kell Brook in 2017, where he systematically broke down Special K with brutal body blows to make the championship rounds a near-on impossible task for his opponent. Errol Spence really is a quality operator, and he'll go on for me and I think can dominate this division. In more recent times, Spence has performed at a true pound-for-pound -pound level in victories over Mikey Garcia and Sean Porter, using calculated tactics to defeat top-grade opposition in the welterweight division. One minute remaining. Oh! Oh! Spence said that's what he wanted to do. This video was put together before Spence's upcoming showdown with Danny Garcia, another top fight, but about that wouldn't have changed my ranking for him either way, assuming that he wins. Spence was involved in a severe car crash at the end of last year, which put his career in jeopardy, but he's since made a full recovery. However, the severity of the incident worries me that he might not return to the ring as the unstoppable force he once was. Only time will tell. Due to Spence's natural size, he's a fraction slower than other top welterweights, yet he makes up for it with his additional top-tier all-around attributes. I wouldn't have much argument against Spence being a spot or two higher on the list, and I think it goes without saying a victory over the likes of Crawford or Charlo would rank him considerably higher, perhaps even number one.
The takeover has begun. As of 2020, zero question marks remain around the Brooklyn-born freight train Tiafimo Lopez. Lopez getting right to it. Wow! What a knockdown by Lopez! I did 12 rounds and a backflip. I'm still in shape. When a fighter is hyped up early on in their career as much as Tiafimo was, doubt usually surfaces among the hardcore community. Can he take a punch? Can he go the distance? Can he do it on a cold, rainy night at Stoke? All reasonable questions, yet in what has to be one of the first instances I can remember, there was little to no hate or doubt at all, and that's due to the incredible career path and top rank has provided him so far. Oh, big left hand, I don't think he'll get up from that. That was a huge left hand. This fight's all over. Barely a year after turning pro in 2016, Teofimo threw himself in the deep end of the lightweight division and started putting beatdowns on the who's who of the top 15. This fight is over! Teofimo Lopez with a big foot! Exceptional performances ending with one-punch knockouts became routine through 2018 and 2019, with the latter mentioned here, seeing him crowned world champion after defeating the tricky and avoided Richard Comey with staggering moments years. away from having it happen! Becoming a world champion only ignited his hunger and determination further. Who's happy with one belt when you have to hold four to be the undisputed king of a given division? Doing what I gotta do, take over. Um, no disrespect to Lomachenko and Leonidas, but I'm, I'm here to take over the show. On October 17th, 2020, Teofimo decided to skip the usual homecoming or glorification fight, if you will, and jump straight into the deep end to unify the titles against the pound-for-pound -pound veteran, Vasily Lomachenko. It's winner take all, let's do this. My initial doubts as to whether Lopez was ready for such a matchup were erased reasonably quick as he used top draw tactics to limit Lomachenko offensively while racking up round after round by sticking ramrod jabs in Loma's face. He has committed to that from the start. It was a good 11th oh. round from Lomachenko, good, but a good finish to it from Lopez as he's stalking forward here. We have one round to go. Lomachenko did show his class in the latter stages of the fight, clawing back some of those rounds but it just resulted in Lopez's victory being that much more praiseworthy as he overcame the onslaught by showing maturity far beyond what the boxing world expected. And I had to dig in there. And, and now, oh, it feels good. Lopez has no notable flaws in his game. He is as quick as they come, strong, defensively savvy, and knows precisely when to pull the trigger. I sense a huge future ahead. However, he needs to keep his head screwed and not allow his ego to consume him. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not sorry. No. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a wally. No. These men are wet like they got no brolly. No. Pop my collar, but I don't pop pills or swallow no Little introduction is needed for our number seven pick, as Anthony Joshua is not only one of boxing's best pugilists on paper, but has acquired millions of fans worldwide, making him one of the sport's most celebrated attractions. Too sharp and too powerful from Joshua, who's slicing into ribbons here. Boxing fame doesn't come easy, however, unless you're a YouTuber, of course as Joshua has built one of the best heavyweight resumes in recent decades, using his sharp all-around skill set to boast over nine world title fights already during his relatively short-lived career. What I have to do to be Wilder? Get him in the ring and I'll knock him spark out. A boxer puncher at heart who has adapted his skill set accordingly, the days of blasting out fringe contenders had long passed as Joshua now continues to challenge consistent top 10 opposition. The loss to Andy Ruiz Jr. last year certainly hindered his career, but with a convincing win in the immediate rematch, I'm not sure the wider boxing press treats him fairly when it comes to the rankings. Am I really the only one that considers him a top fighter? Either way, at 31 years old, there are still a few good years for AJ to build upon his already stellar career. Anthony Josh, you know I'm coming for you. If I was you, Joshua, I'd avoid me, because I will jab your face off. You bomb. Anthony, <laughs> I'm coming for you. Hey, I never said it'd be easy. Joshua is obviously a man that carries a lot of muscle, which appears to be detrimental to his stamina. We've seen him gasping for air on more than one occasion. On the other hand, AJ has fast hands for a heavyweight and is as strong as an ox on the inside, always looking to land his signature uppercut. A pound-for-pound -pound slot for the legendary Filipino slugger Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao is certainly nothing new or out of the ordinary. Bang, 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 bang. Oh! 
Pacquiao became the oldest welterweight champion in history with his win over Keith Thurman last year and joined George Foreman as the only two pro boxers to win world titles 20 years apart. Now I prove it again at age of 40, so Manny Pacquiao's journey is still uh, continue. Since his controversial defeat to Jeff Horn in 2017, Manny appears to be rolling back the years with consecutive prime-like performances over Matisse, Broner, and Thurman respectively. However, with no outing in 2020 and lurking rumors of a Conor McGregor fight being next, this will likely be the last time he features on a current list like this. There, then moves away. Now his back is against the ropes. Margarito tries to press the action. Pacquiao hits a flush with a big left hand. Manny's speed, power, and footwork have remained the gold standard in boxing ever since he conquered America in the mid-2000s. It doesn't matter what weight he fights at or what age he fights at, his legendary skill set always finds a way to give his opponents help. Bit of a smile from Manny Pacquiao. Oh, oh down oh, goes oh. Thurman! Thurman knocked down late in round one! The fact that this is a 41-year-old's performance card and his glowing attributes are speed and stamina kind of speaks volume for just how well Manny has aged in boxing terms. An experienced guy like Pac-Man has little flaws that he hasn't already rectified. However, his eagerness to trade away, looking for a knockout, often leaves him in danger defensively. But then again, that's why we love him. After the legendary Japanese bantamweight, Fighting Harada retired in 1970, the Asian boxing scene as a whole took a dip, and more traditional sports such as wrestling and amateur martial arts became the only competitive entertainment Japanese spectators were interested in watching. In the days that followed, millions of Japanese seemed totally mesmerized by the American champ. It was as if Godzilla, the movie monster of the 1950s, had returned to Tokyo. However, during the mid-2000s, with rising champions in Takashi Uchiyama and Hozumi Hasegawa, things started looking up, and young Japanese kids took inspiration in the fighting game once again. And we were told to expect something special. That was quite a show. One of those kids is perhaps the most fearsome and dangerous pugilist to ever emerge from the rising sun. He may look like a BTS member, but you don't get the nickname The Monster for no reason. He's called the monster, Andre, because of his knockout power and the 11 knockouts in 13 fights. Now Ortiz is gonna... Oh, my God! Unbelievable! After a stellar amateur career, Inouye wasted no time fighting journeymen and became a world champion after merely six fights, defeating Adrian Hernandez for the WBC light flyweight title. Six years and 16 fights later, Inouye has never taken a backward step, progressing through multiple divisions while capturing an array of championship belts. Inoue's crowning moment came at the tail end of 2019 when he faced the fellow Asian star Nonito Donaire in the World Boxing Super Series Final. A fight that on paper looked routine for Noya, yet the action that transpired made the bookmakers look foolish. Oh, that time, Donaire comes back with that famous left hook. Both men exchanging. He's walking through them so far. Catches Inoue on the chin, short left hook. Inoue tried to hang on there. In what became the Ring Magazine Fight of the Year, both Inouye and Donaire traded blows at a relentless pace for the entire 12 rounds, each man testing their opponent's limit, with Inouye's classy boxing skills and brutish power ultimately being the deciding factor. After signing with Bob Arum and Top Rank in 2019, boxing fans were treated to another monster stateside showcase in October this year against Jason Maloney. Sometimes oh, oh, big right hand there from Inouye, and Maloney takes it, and he takes two steps back. Inouye thoroughly impressed, landing unmerciful haymakers before scoring a KO in the seven. Round seven. Oh, oh, a big right hand from Naoya Inouye, and it is over. Naoya the monster Inouye on Halloween night knocks out Jason Mayhem Maloney. In terms of pure ability, I'd rank Inouye one of, if not the best in the world, and I think that reflects with his 90-rated card overall. The amount of power he can generate in that 120-pound body is shocking. As Inouye strives to conquer more divisions down the line, I think his naturally small frame will struggle to cope in those rough-and-tumble contests. But for now, at bantamweight, nobody can beat him.
Upon transitioning to the heavyweight division in 2019, the 200 pound super champ, Alexander Usyk, was indeed the only fighter in boxing today I can honestly remember cleaning out an entire division while leaving no stones unturned. Of course, probably now best bar 15 and a half stone now, and the hand speed is, is, is tremendous. The run included wins over the now consensus number one, Maris Bredis. The murderous punching Murat Gassiev topped off with a highlight reel KO of the much informed Tony Belly. And score. And then he nailed the right. Oh! Usyk building up and it's over just like that. However, after signing with DAZN last year, the quantity and quality of his fights took a notable dip. Of course, adapting to a new division takes time, especially when it's a 30 to 40 pound difference. Yet, as a man pushing the boundaries of his prime years, I honestly expected more than Chaz Witherspoon and Derek Chisora as his first opponents. On a positive note, we did learn a lot about Usyk's capabilities at heavyweight from the Chisora fight. I am going all out. I'm going guns blazing all out. As promised by the man himself, Chisora pushed the Ukrainian hard during the opening rounds, throwing his full arsenal of shots with vicious intentions. However, the legendary engine we've seen from Usyk in the past came to fruition once again, taking over the fight entirely by the seventh and continuing his dominance to the final bell. My boxing. You know, you, this, it's real testing heavyweight, you know, uh, sort of big guy, hard guy, it's beautiful boxing, I love dogs. I've been quite reserved with my opinion on Usyk at heavyweight. The number of advantages he yields to the monsters at title level makes the dream of becoming a two-weight undisputed champ seem like an impossible task. Yet, with his movements as sharp as ever, footwork light years ahead of Wilder and Joshua, perhaps there's still a place for the next-gen Eastern European style to mix it up amongst the behemoths. It's worth considering that the card for Usyk here is a heavyweight version, whereas his cruiser card would be rated considerably higher. Either way, I think much of the attributes have correlated nicely so far, with his stamina being the standout stat and the highest in boxing today. Usyk has always been a slow starter in fights, and we saw that again while conceding so many rounds to an ungainly and crude Chisora, something he needs to work on going forward, if he can. As a career-long Fury fan, nothing warmed my heart more this year than seeing the Gypsy King finally accepted and respected for the masterful boxer he truly is. Schwartz tries his best. Look at Fury! What unbelievable upper body movement defensively! <laughs> the referee doesn't know which way to move. <laughs> Angles. <laughs> Admittedly, some fodder was swept aside as he made his route to Vladimir Klitschko in 2015, which kind of left the hardcore community in two minds as to how far his career could actually go. Anybody, the Klitschko is anyone, they're big as me, but they're not as fast, they've got no movement, they're like wood, if you know what I mean, robotic as it said. As he continues to build up a margin over Klitschko in landed punches oh. counted by Kaku. Oh, good shot. Big left hook by Fury! Even once the super champ was dealt with in his own backyard, the doubts continued primarily due to a lack of action that took place that night in Dusseldorf. The scarcity of respect Fury got for his crowning moment, combined with other ongoing mental health conditions, sent the 6'9 slickster out of control, essentially eating, drinking, and drug taking himself close to suicide. It makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up talking about it because nobody would ever know the, 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 tr the deepness and the truth of this journey, you know? <laughs> Yet, with the help of some close friends and a lot of willpower, he not only returned, but challenged by far the most feared man in boxing in Deontay Wilder. Any time, any place! Knock out, Knock out! Knock out! We all know Fury won that first fight. Even with a couple of knockdowns in Wilder's favor, the traveling Brit racked up every point while remaining on his feet, beating the bronze bomber in every aspect of the sweet science. Just over a year later, with a little help from the KO specialist Sugar Hill of the Kronk, Fury switched up his style and destroyed the unbeaten in 43 Deontay Wilder at his own game, on the front foot looking for the knockout at all stages. Fury might not have a resume with as much meat as Anthony Joshua. Still, his wins over Vlad and Wilder will always stand above any feat his fellow Brick can achieve in the foreseeable future. Unless, of course, AJ beats Fury. Fury. He's just oh. awkward. He's just awkward if you know where I'm coming from. Tall. And I think he's a bit of a nut job, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs>
Weighing in at a staggering 275 pounds for his previous fight, it's amazing how fast and nimble Tyson still looks. Additionally, his most significant attribute for me has to be his physical strength. We've seen beasts like Chisora, Klitschko, and Wilder utterly dumbfounded with the roughhouse tactics Fury likes to impose. The big man does enjoy his work a little too much sometimes, though, often playing to the crowd before he takes the canvas, which has happened on five or six occasions. After unifying the light welterweight division in 2016, Terrence Bud Crawford has set out on one of the most destructive knockout streaks the boxing world has ever seen. He's a fantastic boxer puncher that often concedes the first third of a fight with complete faith in his ability to overcome any adversity in the championship round. Big left hand, right hook, uppercut, sends him back, another left hand. Y'all didn't give me enough credit, so I had to go in there and show y'all. For my money, the best all-around boxer globally, he's proven his skills against an array of championship-level fighters over his current 37-bout career, which to this point remains a perfect one. This is my weight class. This is yeah. my weight class. Yeah, you're right. This is my weight class now. When I entered it, it's mine. Due to a lack of challengers, Crawford moved up to the welterweight division in 2018 in search of some profile-raising fights, two of which serving their purpose in Amir Khan and Kel Brook. Position to let his combinations go. Beautiful right hand. Still, question marks remain over the body of work Crawford has produced since turning pro in 2008, Gamboa being the only pound-for-pound -pound opponent he's beaten. Although, with the likes of Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman, and Sean Porter blocking any route to Undisputed, it's going to be a fun ride out to the end of the Omaha's career. With no notable flaws to speak of, Crawford's only negative is his age. History shows that 33 on average is the last prime year for many championship-level fighters. Bud's borderline perfect defensively with his incredible engine and never-fading power being the highlight. With 17 fights against current, former, and future world champions, Mexico's own Saul Canelo Alvarez has by far the most prestigious boxing career of the last decade. In the opening round oh, the yeah, damn. Just, oh. That wobbled it a little bit. Come on, that's true. Oh, 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 from Alvarez. Brilliant performance in the middle of the ring by both fighters. That was a headshot down oh, the body, and that should do it. It's over. That is it. The list of Hall of Fame opponents he's defeated is uncanny, albeit a few past their prime. Still, on paper, it certainly rivals his great Mexican counterpart, Julio Cesar Chavez. It just looks so much more powerful. He's that digging gun. He heard him there. Solid, solid right hand upstairs. Known for his blistering combinations, savage punching power, and slick defensive work, Canelo has bitten traits from each legendary rival that he's faced, implementing the part of his opponent's game he struggled with the most into his future bouts. Oh no, not at all. He's a, he's a strong competitor. He's a strong champion. It's nothing I never felt before after being in the sport over 20 years. But um, he's a tough competitor. He's a tough competitor. In recent years, we've seen Canelo push his body to the limits to achieve greatness, becoming a champion in four different weights, with his most recent venture 20 pounds past his optimal mass at light heavy against the formidable yes. Sergey Kovalev. Kovalev's down, Kovalev's out, it's over! That While engaging in high-tempo slugfests has elevated Canelo to the sport's highest earning competitor, it has also made many of his high-profile fights considerably close, to the point where many fans feel he's even been gifted the odd decision or two. Either way, when Canelo has fought someone not ranked in the top three of a given division, it's been nothing short of a bloodbath, proving his quality shines far beyond lingering contenders, a feat his closest rivals can't claim. A showcase fight for the biggest star in the sport. With Callum Smith coming up soon, Canelo's legendary chin will be put to the test once again. But as we've seen against the likes of Miguel Cotto and Gennady Golovkin, this guy is made of pure steel. Canelo's stamina used to be a place of issue in years past, but he's since proven himself more than capable of fighting at a decent pace for 12 rounds. I'm hoping Alvarez's light heavyweight trip was nothing more than a smash and grab because I personally think that 175 pound top contenders in their prime will give him a whole heap of problems. Let me ask you a question. Can I get on a pound for pound list now at the top? Is it possible? I don't think...
Now, here are a few honorable mentions that are only a win or two away from cracking my list, with Triple G, Josh Taylor, and Vasily Lomachenko being the most notable. Juan Francisco Estrada was probably the closest to making the cut, however, with wins in recent years over Swiss Katsor Rungvisai and Carlos Quadras proving his dominance in the lower weight classes.